I've seen several different shapes of the Cartier, the Cartier Tank Solo, which I did a review on, the Santos de Cartier, which I also did a review on. I've also looked at the Tank Francaise, which you can see here, which is actually my wife's watch. I'll later do my wife's watch collection. I think I finally have permission. One of the models I've looked at a lot is the Centre and also the Cartier Tank American because they share a similar design language in the elongated case style. This is the Cartier Tank American. This is in white gold. This is a prior model and it's a pretty neat watch. Generally, let's go over the specs. You can see them on the screen. I typically don't narrate them. This is the large model of the prior version. Now, this shares the same size dimensions you could find from the steel version right now that is also the large model. There are differences between the modern steel variant and this prior white gold variant. The biggest difference is going to be the fact that obviously one is stainless steel and one is white gold, but also the stainless steel one is now in quartz and this one is an automatic movement. Also, you'll notice two other major differences on the dial side. The white gold variant has a stamped guilloche dial, whereas the current steel version just has a printed white clean dial that you see in a lot of the steel variants. This variant also has a date window and a date cutout, whereas the modern steel version does not have that. And I know that there's a taboo, I think around black tie events where you have the date or a lot of dress variants where you have the date. And I'm pretty sure black tie, you're not even supposed to have a running seconds hand. Apparently I don't wear black tie. Like this is almost as nice as I get. You know, I can obviously dress up with a sports coat, but I don't typically wear a tuxedo or go into any formal, formal black tie. I think the thing with Cartier that's so interesting is the fact that it can bridge those gaps. For a lot of people that are more casual like myself and most fashion these days, it can scale up to be more nice, you know, higher end, look very put together. It also can be put on a casual clothing. Like this is pretty casual. I have jeans and a quarter zip and a shirt. And this, I think, dresses it up an element. Now, there are a few things that I don't like about the watch as well, but I'll get into those. Obviously, Cartier, you know, has three main model lines of their tank, the Francaise, which is supposed to be their French boutique variant, their American, which is the American variant, and then also the Anglaise, which is from their London or English variant. You know, the Cartier Tank American is a classic design. I think because it pulls so much from the Centre, it has a look that is ineffably Cartier. And what I love about Cartier is when you put it on and you wear this like square case design, you feel like you're from a different world. Like you feel like you step back in time in a lot of ways. I remember wearing this around and feeling like I needed a dress shirt and that I must be living in the 30s or 40s or 50s because that's just the design. That's just the feel I think that I get when I wear one of these classic Cartier looks. Both this, the Francaise and the Solo, all of those gave me that feeling of like, I don't know, like a 50s kid. It just gave me the feeling of someone who's trying to make it in the 1950s. And I don't know if that's an aesthetic that you're looking for, but it does, while this is a modern watch, it does feel very Art Deco. It feels very old. And I like that aspect of it. You keep the modern water resistance, you keep some of the modern compliments, but you feel like the watch steps you back in time. And that is, I think, what Cartier does so well. Now, this older variant does have three sizes, small, medium, and large. This is relatively large for, I think, a lot of people who like a smaller Cartier design dress watch. I think it, for me and for more of a modern context, I like the sizing in this. I like that it extends all the way across my wrist. This features blued hands. It has a stamped guilloche dial, obviously the cutout for the window we talked about earlier. It does have the corbuchon on the sides. You can see it still carries a lot of that Cartier aesthetic with the screws, the exposed flat head screws throughout the case back and through each of these case sides. It comes with this Cartier Made in France band, which I assume is alligator. Although I'm not entirely sure if it's going to be a genuine leather, I'm assuming that it is genuine alligator. It looks very similar actually to this strap here. This is a Jaeger Benzinger, which I'll do a full review of later. This watch I think is really cool and a great value. And oddly enough, these are the same price. This is a stamped guilloche dial. And this right here is an actual hand carved guilloche dial, but you can buy them for the same price, same heat blued hands. And then in the back side, obviously here, you just have a standard case back and something like this Jaeger Benzinger, you have a guilloche movement in the back and also a hand carved 
balance cock which is a nice touch. We'll talk more about the Jaeger Benzinger, I think, in a later video. But the Cartier gives you a lot of the things that most people want in something like this. It looks that cuff style design. It wraps around the wrist. It gives you a different, unique shape. It does call attention to itself as a result. I think if you're wearing this, people notice the watch that you're wearing. Whereas if you wear any round watch, most people aren't going to notice. Regardless, I have experienced it. Most people don't notice my watch ever. But when I wear this, People have noticed my watch and they've asked me about it. So that's something you do need to know about Cartier. One of the things I really like about this as well is the fact that it's screw in lugs. So you can see the screws here on this side as they come through. They screw onto the frame of the watch, which is something you also see in Panerai's and some other watches. It's really nice to have that in there because you don't have the possibility of the lug failure. I have worn this also on a mesh bracelet, which I think is really nice. I got that idea from Your Terrific, from Evan at Your Terrific. Really like the mesh look on this watch as well, rather than the leather band. And this mesh bracelet was only like 18 bucks on Amazon. So it's not the end of the world. If you want to buy one, you can easily get one and then dress this up. I think the American is one of those unique prospects around the Cartier line where it's kind of an overseen or overlooked model. I, I know that they released a new variant relatively recently to in reintroduce it in stainless steel. And I don't think most people talked about it. And I don't know why. I think that of my favorite Cartiers, the Santos de Cartier, the Santos Dumont, and this, are my top three. While I love the Solo or the Tank Louis style, it doesn't really fit my wrist. Uh, I've had a different review where I talk about that. It doesn't really fit my wrist. The biggest reason on the detractors for Cartier for me has to do with the fact that there's so many polished edges. One of the things with Cartier is it is going to be a scratch magnet. You're going to notice scratches very quickly uh, just because all of the polished surfaces. I've seen Santos de Cartier's, you know, basically after one year of use on a normal person's wrist and it picks up scratches all over the bezel. And I am someone who does scratch up my watches, I think more than the average person, unfortunately, because of the in industry that I'm in and I try to not take off my watches. If I took them off all the time, every time I went back in the warehouse, then What's the point of wearing it in the first place? I do end up scratching several of my watches. A few of them now I am more considerate to try and avoid scratching them like the vintage Speedmaster or like up there, there's also a Benzinger, which I'll do a different review on that as well. But this one, you can see the scratches pretty quickly. And the thing with white gold is it's gonna be softer than stainless steel. While both steel and white gold will both scratch, you'll end up noticing scratches and getting scratches way easier on this white gold than you would on something in stainless steel. That being said, my preference would be for this white gold variant because one, I actually kind of like the little extra weight that you get out of this watch. For how small it is, the white gold does give it some substance, which I think is really nice, even though it's still obviously compact and wearable. I like the fact that there's an automatic movement in there because I'm relatively normally a movement guy and I think five grand for a steel variant with a standard white dial, stainless steel case, and a quartz movement in there, regardless of if it's thermocompensated or not. I like quartz, but five grand for a quartz watch with no other like additional polished elements in there for it to call out as to why it's worth it is a bit steep for me. And if you can get the same price version in this in white gold with an automatic movement, I would go for a used variant of this. Obviously, you can see it here. I think that the Cartier Tank American is a great watch. It's just not, I'm not ready for it, I think. You know, in several years when I'm in my late 30s or early 40s, I think that this will be a great watch to have in my collection. I just don't feel as though I'm ready to have a Cartier Tank American as a useful piece of my watch collection. I think I just simply won't wear it and I haven't been wearing it, which is why I'm actually selling this. There's actually a link down below to my eBay store. If you wanna buy anything that I have that I'm selling, they're all down there. I don't sell watches as a dealer, but I do obviously sell things out of my collection and I typically buy watches in order to review them and incur the cost or penalty of having to sell them on because I think it allows me to have an independent review whenever I can get my hands on watches that otherwise I wouldn't be able to. Now, as for negatives, you know, I talked about the fact that white gold scratches super easily. This crown isn't the easiest to operate. Um, that's just the nature of the beast when it comes to Cartier. They have these small little crowns that are typically very difficult to operate. This is easier than like my wife's uh, or my mother's, but you know, it's still 
not the easiest to operate. I think the band, you know, is nice. I wish it had like maybe a millimeter taper, but that's pretty minor. I do wish it had a deployant buckle on here. These buckle variants, I think you just end up ruining the strap quicker than you do with a deployant. Plus, I think a deployant really dresses this up and makes it really nice. Now you can always add one aftermarket if you wanted to, uh, but that's something that, you know, for this amount of money these days, I'd like to see and I'd expect to see a deployant buckle on here. This automatic movement is also a single oscillating movement, meaning that when it rotates in one direction, it winds the watch. When it rotates in the other direction, it does nothing. So it basically spins and doesn't do anything. One of the downsides with that is the fact that you can sometimes hear it when the oscillating rotor spins the opposite direction. You can sometimes hear that rotor or feel it on your wrist as it spins the other way. If you've ever owned a Valju 7750, you'll know the feeling. That happens on that same watch as well. A lot of these older watches that used a rotor that only winds in one direction will have that downside. But this watch, because of how thin it is and how tight it is to the wrist, I think you notice it a little bit more. That's one of the detractors, I think, for the automatic variant over the quartz variant. If you're out there looking for one, take a look at this model instead of the Solo and the Sanchez Cartier that everyone else is buying. I think this is something a little in the back catalog of Cartier that is at a great price and definitely offers an interesting value. What do you guys think about Cartier? What do you think about the Cartier Tank American? Is it a watch that you would ever buy? Let me know in the comments below. See you next time.